And hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tony Castanario. I'm the Director of Recruitment for Willamette University's MBA programs. And people are going to be kind of joining us, and we've let other people know that it's okay if they're late because we are going to record this session and make sure everybody gets to see it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit my slideshow here to kind of get us started. And just checking, uh, can everybody see Nate, Marley, Alex, everybody sees my screen. We should be good to go now. All right, we'll kind of get this thing kicked off. So again, my name is Tony Castanario. I'm with Willamette University, uh, the MBA programs, and we're representing all of our programs tonight. So this is our first fall 2023 webinar kickoff, uh, Admissions Connect. You're going to get to meet our team. We're going to talk about our different programs and how to apply and the process and answer any questions you guys have. So uh, we'll get this started. Uh, the team that's here tonight is gonna be our Assistant Directors of Recruitment, Nate Nagy, Alex Salazar, and Marley Nicasio. You're gonna hear from all of us this evening. We're gonna talk a little bit about process, application, all those good things. And you'll be able to ask any one of us questions. And if there are questions as we're going, feel free to go ahead and put them in the chat. Our assistant recruiters will be there to answer any of those questions and to make sure that uh, we get things answered as we go. And then again, there'll be a question, uh, there'll be a time for questions at the end. So first off, why an MBA and especially why a Willamette University MBA? Uh, if you're looking at going back to grad schools, uh, the MBA is probably the most versatile graduate degree that you can look at. Uh, we get people that come back to get their MBA from all different sectors, whether it's government work, uh, not-for-profit, for-profit, doctors, dentists, lawyers, engineers, scientists, you name it. The reason why people come back to get their MBA is so they can learn how to be good leaders, they can learn how to be good managers, because at some point in your career, you're going to end up... Um, Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, Cass, not sure you're sharing your screen with the PowerPoint. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. you. So let's get, first off, let's get that squared away. So I'm going to go ahead and share. Can everybody see this now, this screen right here? So I'm going to go back to this. So let's start over. So there's our first slide. We didn't get too far. I just introduced the team. And uh, then we were basically talking about why a Willamette MBA. And like I had mentioned, it doesn't matter what sector uh, of business that you're in. What we hear is at some point in, in people's career, you're gonna get to a point where you're gonna have to manage people. And that's where the MBA really comes in. And what's the difference between you know, Willamette's MBA versus other schools MBA? And that's really what we're kind of talking about tonight as well as, so it's not just, you know, why the MBA, but also why Willamette and what are the different MBA programs that we offer. So Willamette University is ranked number one in the state of Oregon. Uh, we've been ranked number one for a while now. And it's a, uh, even though we're a small school, uh, we typically bring in a large class of MBA students. Because if you look at grad programs across the country, uh, I was just looking at University of Oregon's program the other day, they had brought in right around 50 students in their executive program we're gonna be around those totals too. And for a small school, we're competing against all those other MBAs. And so we're not just ranked number one by Forbes here in Oregon, we're ranked in like the top 100. I believe we're in the 60s or 70s this year. These rankings are coming out all the time, but there's about 5,000 MBA programs uh, around the world. So being in the top 100 is a big deal. We're also accredited by AACSB and uh, we have a NASPA accreditation. And the reason why we talk about accreditations is because when you look at MBA programs, the AACSB is kind of a gold standard accreditation. Uh, if you're looking at Stanford and Harvard and Yale, and even in our area, University of Oregon, Oregon State, Portland State, everyone has that AACSB accreditation. So if you're looking at MBA programs, you want to look at that just like uh, if you're going to med school, you want to look at med programs that uh, are accredited, or you want to go uh, to law school, you're looking at, you know, does the Bar Association accredit these law programs? Well, of course, you would go to schools that are accredited with those accreditations. And it's the same for an MBA. If they don't have that AACSB accreditation, if there's only some other local accreditation or regional accreditation, you should think twice because it really sets the standard of the type of material that you're going to learn and, and what's going to be most useful to you when you go out into the work world. So, uh, the NASPA accreditation is for our full-time program. 
So both our MBA for Professionals program and our Early Career and Career Change MBA program are accredited by the AACSB. Our NASPA accreditation follows our Early Career and Career Change full-time program. So we're going to get in the difference between our professional program and our full-time program as we go here. Um, but companies that hire will have an MBAs, you name it. So we span the globe, uh, you know, even locally, regionally, Adidas, which is down the road from us, you've got Nike and Beaverton, Amazon, Apple, Deloitte, all the big companies that you can think of. But students graduate from Willamette. You know, we have students here in Salem that are graduating working for Salem Health. They work for not-for-profits. They work for state government agencies. They work for federal agencies. It's any sector that you can imagine. We don't uh, consider ourselves, you know, a, a placement school for one firm or industry. Students come to Willamette because they have an interest, whether it's entrepreneurship or marketing or finance or whatever it may be, and they ha either have jobs already in the current sector and they're going through our professionals program, or they're entering our early career MBA and they're trying to figure out what they what they want to do, but they're they're following their passions and then they're getting a job in that industry. So again, not a placement school for one sector. Uh, we really will work with students to figure out what it is that you want to do and try to help you get there and accomplish your goals. Uh, we have a world-class faculty. We have faculty that are, you know, from Stanford, MIT, UCLA. Uh, the pedigree of our faculty is outstanding. And the reason why we get such outstanding faculty is because we're not a research institution. We get faculty from these R1 research institutions like Stanford's and Harvard's, uh, but our faculty are embedded with the students. They're, they're not only most of them, you know, all the PhD professors that teach in our program, they're all doing some sort of consulting work in the industry. So it's not just research, they're working with other companies and then they're teaching. And that's a model that a lot of top professors around the country, uh, that's what they really want to do. They want to be able to share that kind of cutting edge knowledge that's going on in the industry with students to prepare them to go out in the world. So not only are they writing their publications and doing research, but that's only part of the gig. It's not a research school. It's a school that what I would consider our faculty is embedded in industry and in the classroom. Uh, the MBA program here at Willem is also designed to help you advance your career in business. And like I said, government or not-for-profit organizations. And although our, um, our a gold standard accreditation, accreditation is for profit, Many students come to Willamette University because we teach more of a cross-sectoral approach across different industries. So we have classes in our programs that students can take that they can learn about not-for-profit work. They can learn about government agencies. And if that's something that uh, interests students, they can take the skills that they learn in general in our MBA program, as well as the more granular specific skills in not-for-profit or government work and apply those. And then the same thing, they, if, if they decide to leave those industries and go to for-profit, again, you're going to be trained in that. And, and it works both ways. We get our graduates that dabble across industries. They'll work for big companies or they'll work for themselves and then go change to potentially government jobs or vice versa. So, um, so if we look at you know, what is the student profile of our MBA for Professionals program? And before I kind of get into the profile here, I, I have the screen up. What is the MBA for Professionals versus Willamette's Early Career Career Change program? And the MBA for Professionals program, and this, this webinar is designed for, for both candidates. So our Professionals program is designed for working professionals that are here domestically in the U.S., locally, that uh, they want to keep their full-time job. They want to go back to school and they have to do it in the evenings. You know, they can't uh, quit their jobs and go to school full-time. If we have people that can and have the ability to quit their jobs because they want a total change in what they've been doing, that would be our early career career change program. That's designed for students right out of undergrad or people, again, that have the capacity. They've been in the industry for years and they they, they finally have reached a point where they want to go chase something else and they can come back and go to school full time. Well, that's early career for change. And so when you look at the makeup of our MBA for professional students, uh, average cohort size each year, and we have a spring start date for our MBA P program, as well as a fall start date. And it's going to be, you know, right around that 15 to 20 mark each year. 
Uh, average age range, you know, it, it, it's a mix. It's between 22 and 64. So we take, obviously, most of our students in the early career program are going to be on the younger side. And then when you get into the MBA for Professionals program, typically people that have three or more years of work experience coming back and, and getting their MBA. And, and some people have a lot more experience in the industry uh, and MBAP. I myself went back into this program. I'm a graduate of the MBA for Professionals program. And I went back to school after more than 20 years. And so I was working, you know, doing my professional job for over 20 years and came back and I made a, a pivot, but I needed to keep employment and stay working while I went back to school. And that's really what this program is. And so, um, you know, we got 24% are working for not-for-profit, 16% in the public industry and 60% are in private industry. So it's a good mix. And it's 40-60 usually is about the ratio of men to women. Uh, that number for women has increased over the years. You know, it used to be flipped and now uh, it's on the other side. And then underrepresented minority students, about 30% of our class. And then when you look at our early career and career change program, okay, the makeup of last year's class, because in this program, again, these people do not come to us typically with full-time jobs. So if you're an undergraduate student or you're an international student. So if you're an international student and you're not in um, the United States and you're trying to come over on an F-1 visa, the only MBA program you would qualify for for us would be the early career and career change program uh, because that's the one that we're able to issue F-1 visas. And so if you have a full-time job back home, you're not gonna be able to stay full-time in that position because you're gonna be in school full-time. It's kind of like going back to med school or going to law school. You have classes Monday through Thursday. They're going to be, you know, 8 a.m. to 3.30 or 4.30 p.m. Whereas in the MBA for Professionals program, it's a little bit different. You're going to be going to class in the evenings twice a week from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. So, so we'll keep talking through the differences between these programs, but just kind of showing students that are looking at early career, the questions we often get are, well, what kind of job offers, you know, do, do I get? I'm going to be 22 or, you know, when I graduate in 20 or 23, 24, when I graduate from the MBA, you know, how do I go and compete against people that have been in the industry? How does this MBA program able to accept students with no experience? And so the, the way it works in this program is that, and, and just so people that are looking at this go, well, I'm not early career, I'm really MBA for professionals. It's okay. Cause what I'm about to say is relevant for both. We have classes and our professors that teach in the early career also teach in the professionals program and vice versa. So there's courses that we offer that are considered consequential or experiential learning courses. And those are not required courses in the MBA for professionals program, although they can be used as elective courses in that program. But for early career students, you have to take some of these courses in order to gain experience and get experience. And we can talk more about that, but some of these courses include um, real money, where students are going to be doing angel investing, and the school has one hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollars a year. You're going to take that money, and you're going to. It's just like Shark Tank. If you've ever domestically watched that show, if you haven't, and you're an international student, go. What is Shark Tank? Well, it's 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 venture capitalists that are that have money that are going to invest in startup companies, and Willamette does that. And we have real money, real investors, and we fly our students to Seattle or San Francisco or L.A sometimes New York, wherever it may be, and you guys are making these investments and you're controlling that fund and you get to put this on paper. And we have MBA for professionals who are interested in these types of classes and they'll take these as well. But those that's how we're able to compete against or, or give our students a, a chance to compete in, in the industry because you're going to be learning from experts and being able to make mistakes and show your work and have to be able to to show an employer that, look, I've actually done some of these things that other people are doing. That, that's just one example. So this screen right here is kind of showing you the makeup of the class. But what, I'm, what I oftentimes hear from students in the early career program is, what's the starting salary? How, how do I compete? How many students are getting jobs before they graduate? And so I, I like to throw these kind of figures out to, sh to show people what's going on. So I'm going to kind of uh, transition this next slide over to my colleague. You're going to hear from me again here in just a bit, but she's going to talk more about, you know, joining the community and um, I'm going to pass this off to you, Marley. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Marley. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about joining the Willamette community. Um, 
So we have a lot of perks that come with being in the program. And one of those is career management, which is a team comprised of two gals, Carly Pond and Katrina Garcia. Um, and they both help really heavily with students and their career advancements. Um, you can set up one-on-one -on -one coaching appointments with them. Um, and they could go through mock interviews, look over your application materials, help your resume, um, and really get you prepared for that next step in your career. And that's for both early career students and MBA for professional students. Um, the career team is also in charge of getting together career treks. Last year they did, I believe three or four, one of them being the Nike headquarters. And they also went to a Trailblazers game, which was really cool. Um, and that's just a couple different events that they do that really gets a lot of people coming um, and you get to make really great connections while doing those treks. Um, and then there's also professional workshops and great alumni network comes with chatting with the career team. Um, they're able to get you connected with those people that do work at those top companies in the area. And our alumni network is really great and they never turn down chatting with Willamette students. So that's really something to take advantage of while you're here. Um, and then moving on, we also have MBA for Life, which is a great opportunity to chat with uh, our faculty about taking classes after you graduate. Um, the time goes by really fast, trust me, and you may not be able to take all the classes that you want to. Um, and so after you graduate, there is the opportunity to take classes that you're interested in after the fact. Um, and then now we can move into the next slide to chat a little bit more about where our locations are. We have two campuses. Um, we have one in Portland and one in Salem. Salem is kind of the hub, obviously that's Willamette's main campus, and that's where the early career career change cohort resides. Um, and same with a MBA for professionals cohort. And then likewise, we have an MBA for professionals cohort in the Portland campus as well. Um, and one thing that's awesome about classes in Portland is early career change students can also take classes there as well when it comes time to take electives. And the Portland campus has catered dinners, which I think is super awesome and a really nice campus overall. And we'll see pictures of that in the next coming slides, but it's a great, beautiful building um, and it's located in downtown Portland. And then, um, yes, here's our map to uh, show the difference between Salem and or the travel distance between Salem and Oregon, or Salem and Oregon, Salem and Portland. Um, for those of you not familiar, it's about 47.3 miles between our Willamette campus and our Portland or our Salem campus and our Portland campus. Um, and then for those not using the miles, I, I calculated it and it's 76.2 kilometers for those not in America um, to make that a little less confusing. And then studying in the Portland Center, these are some photos of the space. Uh, the lecture hall is in the bottom right, and it has great chairs that are so comfortable to sit in for the class. Um, and then above that photo is the kitchen area. And one thing that I love about that is the fridge is always stocked with beverages um, that students are able to help themselves to. And I think that is the greatest perk of the Portland campus. Um, and then on the left, that's just the space that you walk into, and you're able to see whoever's sitting there. And then moving to the next slide, these are more Pictures of the Portland campus, the top right is the dinner that I spoke of. They're always great dinners um, and it's a great time to talk to your classmates in between um, the lecture and connect with others. And then just a couple more photos, one of a classroom and then up top is kind of a lounge space that students are able to use and study in. And then we can move to the next slide where we'll talk about the curriculum. Okay, thank you, Marley. So. Going back to some of this curriculum, uh, again, wanting to kind of explain the difference between the two programs. So we've kind of touched base that the early career is really for people that don't have much experience or some people who may have a lot of experience are coming back to school. MBA Pete, you have a lot of experience, you're working a full-time job. So we talked about two start dates. So we have a spring start date that starts mid-January. I believe it starts this year around January 16th. And we have what we would call two tracks when you start. There's a January track and then there's the fall track. And so if you start in January, this is kind of the way it would look. You would take two courses, it's six total semesters. Your first semester, you'd be taking accounting and managing organizations, individuals, teams, and orgs. 
And then after that, you would go to, so this would be January, that would finish up. It's usually 14 week modules. So you do 14 weeks, then you get a couple weeks off. Then you start up. So in the month of May, you'd be starting up your second semester and you're doing marketing and finance. That's gonna go 14 weeks and then you'll get a couple weeks off. August, you would start up with lead and data, okay? And then in your fourth semester, this is where it starts getting interesting here. So you take all those classes that I just showed you here in the first, second, and third semester. These are all required core classes. But then once you get into semesters four and five here and, and six, you start seeing elective courses pop up. So when we talked about those experiential courses, consequential learning type courses, this is where having two campuses, it kind of opens the doors for students. So if there was an elective course if you were starting in spring, you can start in the MBAP program in either Salem or Portland. And if there was a class that was only offered in one section for an elective in your semesters four, five, and six, if you started in January, you would have the option to also take that class wherever that course was. So if you were located in Portland and you took most of your core classes in Portland, but there was this great class you wanted to take in Salem, you would still have that option and vice versa if you were in Salem. So this kind of just shows that trajectory. We put these QR codes. Again, we can send this PowerPoint out to anybody who's interested, and we'll definitely send the recording out. Uh, moving on to the next slide, it's really just showing the fall track that we talked about. So if you're an MBA for professional student and you're starting traditionally in the fall, this would be your track, okay? You'd be taking lead and data, accounting and managing orgs, then you would go to your finance, okay, and marketing class. And then in semester four, you actually have two electives that you would take. And then semesters five, you would go back to the one elective plus your core. And then semester six is really, you've got your, what we call strategic management and your IMAP. Your IMAP, I should talk about briefly for MBA for professionals is your capstone class. So you have to do some sort of project. That's the other thing that makes this unique for uh, professionals. This program is that if you have a company that you're working for, this is your chance to really do a project for the company, showcase your work, uh, get your employer involved, and, and hopefully do something positive that, that will uh, highlight your skills as well. If you're starting your own business, if you're entrepreneurial, this is a chance to really work with our professors, work with our career management team, work with all your resources you have at Willamette, alums, et cetera, and start that business and get things kicked off, off the ground. So. Again, just a different track for the MBAP folks if you start in the fall versus the spring. Uh, same, same amount of time, it's two year program. And then this is really showing the early career career change program kind of trajectory and how that works when you start with us. So if you start with early career, a lot of international students especially ask me, do you have concentrations? What if I want to specialize in operations or I wanna specialize in marketing or finance or whatever it is? Absolutely, the, the answer is yes. And so it's not your traditional concentrations though, as you would uh, normally find in the past, what schools always did was, if you were interested in marketing, you took as many marketing classes as possible and then they would rubber stamp your transcript and say, you are a specialist in marketing. And we no longer do that for students because students often come to us and say, I'm actually interested in multiple areas, uh, subject areas, because my specialty I've studied in undergrad happened to be in marketing, but it's really operations that I wanna take more of my courses or whatever it may be. And you're able to go down the rabbit's hole of those courses in your second year in this full-time program because the way the program works is it's designed where you take most of your core classes, all of your core except for two in your first year in the program. In your second year in the program, you're gonna see, so this would be year one right here, first year classes. Then when you start to look at your second year classes, look at all the elective courses. You really only have politics and public policy and strategic management. So when you're talking about concentrations and really diving down the rabbit hole of your interest, that's where you're going to be doing it. And for early career students, it's, it's really great because you take these core classes all in that first year, and then you kind of know what your specialty is going to be. You kind of know what you're good at. You know where your passions lie. And then you're going to chase that in that second year. So just, just gives you the flavor of some of those courses. Um, I also want to talk about uh, going back to MBA for professionals. Uh, questions that we always get for both programs. What about scholarships? What about partnerships? Do you partner with um, 
certain businesses? Do I, you know, I, I work for Carrier Global and I, and do, is there any special scholarship? The answer is yes. We do partner with a lot of local companies um, and those partnerships vary with our MOUs how much, but we do have specific partner scholarships. We call them preferred partners. So if you see one of uh, your companies on here on this list, or if you don't see one of your companies, but you think maybe my company should be a preferred partner, we would love to talk to you about that. And, and most of it is really painless. It's most of the time us providing material about our program to companies and then offering a special discount for its employees. And so, but we do offer different scholarships. You can see our Dean's Achievement Scholarship, Opportunity Scholarship, Community Enrichment Scholarship. So we have all these different scholarships that we're able to offer. Well, Lamin is very generous in the amount of scholarship money that we give. Uh, there was a new ranking that came out and I don't remember or recall the name of it, but you can go ahead and send me an email and ask me and I'll figure out what the name was. But it was essentially, uh, we were ranked number 25 out of a lot of different schools for giving out scholarship money. That's a, that's a big thing for Willamette. So our, our mission is to be able to help students make education accessible. So we may be number one and some people look at that and say, well, you're number one, it must be really A, hard to get in there. And two, you must be really expensive. And, and the truth of the matter is, is that our coursework is gonna be rigorous, there's no doubt. Is it impossible? Not at all. I had three young children when I went through the MBA for professionals program. One of them was one years old at the time. And I think I had a three and a six year old. And what I'll tell you is it's flexible. The professors want people to succeed. We're very good. Our professors are very good at what they do, but they're very good at helping our students achieve their goals. And so it's very manageable. Uh, students that graduate from these programs do extremely well. So what I'll what I'll say is there's scholarship money there. We do have partner uh, institutions that we work with. And if your company's not on the list, like I said, we would love to partner with you. Um, early career and career change, place graduate placements and scholarships. Same thing. Get that question a lot for that program. Do uh, are there certain companies that you place people? We talked about that. We're not a placement for uh, one industry. This just give you an example of the last couple of years, some of the different industries in the area that students have been working at. And again, in, if you're an international student, our our students go all over the world. So whether they decide to work here uh, for a year with their OPT when they graduate, or they want to get done and move on, we have students all across the globe. This is just a a quick example of some of the places that our students went to in the last couple of years. So if you look over here to the right, we talk about financial support and financial scholarships. Whether it's early career, career change, or the MBA for Professionals program, 100% of the students that are admitted get some sort of scholarship. So there's not a single student that comes to our programs that are paying full tuition. So I want to make sure that everybody on the call here knows that Willamette is here uh, to try to make this education accessible to all, and we're going to do our part, and then the students are obviously going to have to do their part. If you're looking at graduate schools, uh, the odds are of getting a full tuition scholarship to a grad program is very challenging. It's not impossible, but it's challenging, and the way it works uh, for either program, and, and, and our other recruiters will talk to you about this here in just a second, is that we're gonna have application requirements. And some of those requirements are, you know, gonna be looking at course patterns and grades. We also interview our candidates, all those good things. But for international students, the big question is, well, how do I get a full tuition scholarship? And really that comes to uh, an entrance exam for the early career and career change program. You have to score really well. And we can get granular with that later. For the MBA for professionals program, Oftentimes, the question we're we're working with students more on is, will your employer help you with some benefits part? Do you have a benefits package with your employer? Because that's how we're able to really help you out and supplement the scholarships that we're giving you. So this is basically just a, a brief overview to let everyone know that no matter which program you're interested in, there's scholarship money available. We want to work with you. We interview each candidate whether you're on the professionals program or either in the early career full-time program. And we're gonna work with you to discuss those situations. So uh, what I'm gonna transition this now to my other colleagues, uh, Nate Nagy and Alex Salazar, and they're gonna talk to you and, and talk through the application process with both programs. Thanks, Tony. Um, 
I'm going to focus on the ECCC application um, after I'm done talking about that. And I'll say that, you know, 80, 80 percent of it's going to transfer over to um, the MBAP application as well. But um, uh, Alex Salazar will kind of talk about what those differences look like. I'm with the application, it, we, we've removed a lot of barriers and hurdles and, and made it fairly streamlined and easy to do. Um, I think what's nice at Willamette University and with our smaller team is we can move as slowly or as fast as you want to um, with the application aspect of it. I think there's a couple of important things to know um, before we kind of get into the details is that, number one, the application's online and it's free. Um, and so it doesn't cost you anything to kind of take that first step and open that door. Um, and then the other thing too is with our team, you're gonna have one of us working with you every step of the way. And so you're going to be able to uh, rely on us to communicate with you if there are questions, if there are concerns. And we want this to be a process where you feel supported. And, and that's a big part of our role is to help and answer questions when you, go, when you do go through the process. Um, if you go onto our website, and Tony, if you could bring up the uh, application page, and the university kind of changed how it did things this year, and so this is a new look, but this is the application page that you, that's going to show up when you get under our website. If you're looking at Atkinson stuff, and you see that button, and, and you're like, I, you know, I want to start this process, I'm going to apply now, you'll see a lot of those apply now buttons. It's going to take you to this page, and what you're what you'll notice is there's a lot of stuff on there, and it's not just MBA stuff. You'll see law, you'll see data science, an easy way to kind of slim things down if you can't find what you're looking for is just type MBA in that um, in that search, and it's going to slim you down uh, to those applications that apply for the to the MBA program. Right now. If you're an early career career change student, you would go ahead and click that button and it's going to start you on that early career career change um, uh, application. And so I think this is important because that first landing page, there's going to be a lot of information there. But um, through that page and by typing in the MBA, you'll be able to get to the application that you need to get to. Tony, can you go back to the other screen uh, that uh, the slideshow? So with the application, there's a few things. It's not a laundry list of 27 different things that you're going to have to do to complete an application. And like I mentioned before, Tony, Marley, Alex, and I are going to be working with you every step of the way. But the first thing is to create a username and password. Um, that's going to get your kind of uh, your application started. That's going to register you in our system. And that just means that you've really taken that first step to move forward. And that's the basic starting point with the application. When you do that, there's going to be a few questions at the beginning, um, a couple of buttons to click. But at the end of the day, to get started, you would click on the click on the proper application and create your username and password. Within the app, there's a few things that we need for early career career change students. Um, number one is upload your resume. And this is going to be a little bit different for MBAPs, and Alex will talk with you about that. But for early career, career change students, we're not looking for excellence here. We're not looking for the perfect resume. Don't spend three weeks trying to fill that thing out where it's the perfect version of what you think it might be. Uh, in the early career, career change program, we're here to help fix that, right? That's why we have career management and those wraparound services to work with you on how to make that resume um, uh, uh, an asset for you when you go in and apply for a job. So if you have something for early career, career change students, upload it. That's okay. Um, the second thing is transcripts. And for early career, career change students, you want to go ahead and upload your transcripts from the undergraduate universities that you've attended. Um, some people started off at junior college, some finished at um, the U of O, or some went to two or three schools. The nice thing is when it comes to transcripts, we can move forward with your application initially with unofficial transcripts. And a lot of students already have their unofficial transcripts for the universities they've attended. Now, eventually before day one of classes, we're gonna need those officials in, 
But don't think that if you don't have your official transcripts ordered from the from the schools you attended, that that's going to hold us back from moving you forward in the process. I think that's uh, that's a really important thing. And I like the flexibility that we have to be able to do that. Two references are going to be needed. Um, some people decide to add three or four. We can move forward with your application and an admissions decision if one of those two respond. Ideally, at the end of the day, both will have needed to will have needed to respond by the time classes start on day one. But what's nice is our system takes care of the, the hard work. If you enter their name and their contact information, um, our system is going to automatically send them the information they need to go ahead and respond. With references, just no family members. So, um, you know, I'm sure mom and dad or a brother and sister are going to give you a glowing recommendation. So, um, no family members, but besides that, it could be a professor, it could be somebody who you work for or have a good relationship with. Um, but once again, our system, once they're entered, we take care of the rest. Um, personal statement. Um, and I, th I think a lot of people get hung up on this and want this to be perfect as well. You know, we're, we're not looking for 20 page novels here. You know, a personal statement is 500 words, three or four paragraphs of a little bit of your background why an MBA? Why Willamette University? And what are some of the things that you might want to use it for? Uh, very simple, very straightforward. And, you know, as we'll learn as good managers are are uh, concise and succinct and get their point across in, um, in as uh, few words as possible. And so that essay or that personal statement is something that's a requirement as well. And then for early career career change students, the either, either a, a GRE or a GMAT test score. Once again, just like transcripts, those can initially be unofficial test scores as well. Eventually, we'll need the, the officials, but we realize sometimes that takes a month or two months, and we don't want that to hold you back on going through the process with us and us making uh, being able to make a decision on your application. There is no minimum score to get admitted in the Early Career Career Change Program, but what I will say is, and Tony talked about this a little bit before with scholarships, we look at it as a benefit because if you score really well, it's an opportunity for us in our program to increase your scholarship if we can. Um, and then the last part is the interview. Um, everybody who applies to our program, whether they're an MBA for professional or whether they're an early career career change student, will do a 20 to 30 minute interview most of the time with our senior associate dean, Alex Suber. These are all on Zoom. Um, and he will work around your schedule to make that happen. The recruiter is going to help schedule that for you. And so usually you just give us some available times and we go ahead and send out a Zoom invite. But in that conversation, he's just going to get a uh, take the chance to get to know you a little bit and really talk to you about your motives and why Willamette and why an MBA. It's very conversational. It's nothing to, um, um, you know, uh, for you to look at as a roadblock, um, but he does like to have a conversation with everybody that that applies. Um, what I will say is, if you decide, for example, tonight that you want to do this, you could go in, create your username and password, and upload your resume. And once I have your resume uploaded, we can schedule your interview. We can deal with transcripts. We can deal with references. We can deal with test scores later. We know that stuff is going to come in. But once you upload that resume and you go through that interview with Alex Subert, you're going to be 75% of the way there um, into getting this application finished. And so once again, we can move quickly if you decide that you are motivated to do this thing. And I do think we've removed a lot of those hurdles and roadblocks that sometimes make it impossible for people to move forward. And once again, you'll have a recruiter working with you every step of the way. Alex? Yeah, thank you, Nate. Um, I think you did an excellent job of kind of reiterating and going through all those points that we had touched on previously and expanding on kind of the requirements of the process just in general. There are some key distinctions between MBAP and the full-time program, ECCC. The main distinction there is kind of the experience that individuals are bringing um, with them. Typically, individuals who are attending the full-time program are more often than not students looking to continue their education 
and for that have a bit of that more limited experience. That's not always the case, but they are able to go back to school full time versus the MBA for professionals is exactly that a program that allows individuals and is designed so that they are going to school while working full time and to be able to apply those concepts. Because of that, a lot of these individuals are returning after some time. And with that, we understand that um, the not everybody's always 100% comfortable going back to taking the GRE or the GMAT. And for that, we offer um, testing waivers. So for individuals that have had leadership experience, managerial experience, have been in their particular field or industry for some time, um, again, we take a very holistic view to the application process, and we never want anyone to feel discouraged and automatically disqualify themselves by saying, hey, I check every other box, but I really just don't want to go back down and sit through a standardized test. We completely understand that. Um, they can be challenging and, and at times anxiety inducing. So you can just go ahead and let us know where you're at. Um, and of course, we'll encourage you to, you know, find the right path that works for you. But of course, the testing waiver is not out of the question at all whatsoever. We really encourage everybody to ask and let us know where they are um, in order to do so. And of course, that it goes for any other parts of, of the uh, application that, that Nate went ahead and outlined. Don't disqualify yourself from anything. Ask us questions about it. If you have questions about your references, the personal statement, that resume, uh, like Nate said, don't beat yourself up over it. We just love to see that resume. It's not for us to determine whether or not you are you've had the employment history to be at Willamette. There's an opportunity for everyone here. We just kind of want to make sure um, that you have a productive conversation during the time of your admission interview with Dean Subert. So again, it's a very, very holistic view, and that's one of the key distinctions. Um, so I see those would be it. Uh, if you guys have any additional questions, please feel free to let us know. Uh, again, Nate did an excellent job kind of running through those things. They, very, they are very, very similar for the programs, but again, usually just that age distinction and things that go along with that. Yeah, and thanks, Alex. Thanks, Nate. I wanted to show everybody uh, just really quickly if I can get the top of my screen to cooperate with me here. Um, what I wanted to let everyone know is that we can send you guys links to all of the things that we're talking about. So whether it be, um, and let me get, please disappear so I can get to my tabs. Let's see here, let's see what I can do right here, admissions process. So we have on our website links, whether you're an early career applicant, whether you're an MBAP applicant that outlines all the things we discussed tonight. So we're happy to email you these links where you can actually go through and say, what was it that they were talking about that I needed? Uh, what are the deadlines? All that good stuff. This is all on our website and we're happy to send everybody these links. So you can see this one isn't for an early career. Uh, we also have for international applicants, the same thing. Now for international applicants, the, the process is very similar for early career, except there are a couple of different steps. We do have uh, transcript verifications that we're going to be uh, needing from WES. We can talk about all that stuff. Like Nate had said this, uh, you don't have to let those kind of things hold you back from applying because you can apply online at any time and then you can go ahead and send a lot of the documentation later. But really similar references, personal statement, all of this is similar across the programs uh, where it gets different for international students, there's also going to be a language proficiency exam that students are going to have to take. Everybody still needs to interview. If there's any supplemental application materials, everything is outlined on the website. And then for the professionals program as well, um, same thing. This is all outlined for you. Uh, happy to provide any links, give you guys any kind of direction when we're done here. Feel free to reach out anytime to any of our um, recruiters and we can provide this information. So going back to our slides, um, we wanted to show you everyone this. So we have a couple of upcoming webinars throughout the fall. This first one was really process oriented, talking about our programs, talking about how to apply. What we're gonna be doing with the next couple of webinars, it's gonna be what I would consider more fun, right? We're gonna have guest speakers. We're gonna have professors that are gonna be talking on hot topics. So you're gonna actually hear from people in the program. You're probably gonna also hear from, there's gonna be two webinars and we just are, are deciding on, on who to invite to which ones, but we have uh, professors that are basically locked in. And then when we bring alums or we bring current students, we'll have those topics kind of put together. For example, we have a topic coming up um, in November that's gonna be uh, managing with authenticity. 
And then Professor Kieran O'Connor is going to be our professor there, but we're probably going to bring in a couple students slash alums that are going to be talking about return on investment. So the big question across programs is, okay, well, what is it, what is it doing for me now? Or what, what, uh, how did I start and where am I now kind of thing? So students can see how this has helped them or applicants can see. And then the second webinar, our guest speaker is going to be talking about not-for-profits, uh, the different not-for-profits in the area, his topic, he'll be uh, solidifying that soon. And then we'll probably have some other guest speakers there as well. So we encourage everyone, if you can attend, if you're remotely interested, uh, please join us in those webinars. The last plug I was going to put in was, if anyone is interested in sitting on a class, if you're local and you would like to sit in on a class or you would like to part participate in talking with a professor, uh, you could be an international student saying, well, I'm not local, but I want to talk to a professor or I want to talk to a student. We can do that as recruiters. We can make those introductions and we can, uh, we can get those talks happening for you. So we encourage all students, all applicants, anyone who's inter interested in the program, we want you to learn as much as possible. We want to answer any questions you have, and we want to provide other resources for you as you're trying to make your decision. So in addition to meeting with us, you're definitely going to meet with our senior associate dean, but you can also sit in on a class or you can also talk to a professor or a student. So um, just so everyone on the call knows, uh, myself and Nate Nagy and Alex Salazar are all graduates of the MBA for Professionals program, and Marley is a graduate of our Early Career Career Change program. So we have, uh, you know, we have insight about the program. We work here. We went through the program. Uh, there's a lot of fantastic people here, and we're help, we're we're a resource for you as well on the front line. So, with that, I want to go ahead and thank everybody for coming. Uh, and this is we have 10 minutes left, and we wanted to kind of open this up if anyone had questions or anything that we missed in the chat. Can you talk about MBA and Masters in Data Science? So yes, absolutely. So. For those who asked about the master's in data science, uh, we actually have a combination program that students can either in the early career career change where they can combine the MBA with a master's in data science master's, and they can basically do their normal two years of their MBA and you take one extra semester and you're finishing up uh, that master's in data science as well. So it's a combination program, it's two years, 21 months for the early career is your typical, how long the program is, and then you'd be taking that extra semester in the summertime to finish up. For the MBA for Professionals program, it's not a combo program, but you are able to substitute uh, those some of those elective courses that you take in the program with data science courses. And then as a graduate, when you finish with, finish with the MBA for Professionals program, the master's in data science program will honor you as a uh, alum to give you a special alumni discount scholarship. And then they will also basically look at those courses that you've already taken, wipe those off of what you need to take to finish the master's in data science program. So you're going to get discount prices, pricing, and you're going to get those courses that you've already taken knocked off. So even though it's not a combination program, you're still able to get that degree if that's something that interests you. And then we have an education development center as well that's uh, for non-degree seeking students that you can get discount pricing. If you graduate from the MBA program and you want to take a, some, one of our certificate programs, that's a whole separate subject though. Um, did that answer your questions about data science? Hopefully. And then, okay, is the spring start application, spring application intake? So, so the spring start, so I'm not sure I understand the question, but I will say this, the spring start um is for the MBA for Professionals program only. And if you're an international student seeking F1 visa status, again, you're not eligible for that MBA for Professionals program. You're only eligible for the early career career change. And the only start date for early career is gonna be the fall start date. And that's gonna be in August. So unfortunately for international students, um, that's the only program that issues the visa. And because of the curriculum, how I laid it out, where you're taking all those core classes in your first year, and then it's almost all electives in your second, that's why there is no spring start date, because the way the curriculum is, is lined up in early career, it's just different. You kind of have to go through steps A, then B, then C, uh, and, and the MBAP is a little bit different. So, and then let's see, what would a weekly schedule look like in early career MBA? So, weekly schedule, let me, let me click back over here. Um, 
to kind of go through. So, and then Marley, feel free to jump in. I, I think this would be a great, great question for you to answer. Kind of a weekly schedule as you're looking at early career. That was one of the questions we got. So for the schedule, I would say um, the way that it was broken up when I did the program, I had majority of my classes on Monday and Wednesday. And then on Tuesday and Thursday, I only had two classes that were an hour and a half long. Meanwhile, the other Monday and Wednesday, I think I had three classes um, that were an hour and a half long. And I might be mistaken with that, but I know that they've restructured since. Um, and there's shorter classes. Maybe I'm misspeaking. I took two classes um, on Tuesday and when Tuesday and Thursday, they were three hours long, but now they're doing it two days a week for an hour and a half for each of them. So it's kind of equally split up and then pace um, is a longer chunk of time, I believe. So there's like a three hour chunk for that class in specific. And that is only on two days a week now. Um, and then when you move into your second semester, it's kind of the same exact format, just with different classes and at different times. Um, and the beauty of the program, you're kind of all in, but there's still time to have like a part-time job on the side, I'd say. Um, I was able to balance that, but it's just a matter of getting that to fit into your schedule. Um, but you have a lot more flexibility going into your second year where you only have two um, core classes that you need to take and you're able to fill in your electives kind of the way that you like it. So my second year, I took majority of my classes in the evening. Um, so I had basically my full day to myself and then I had six to tens. Um, but a lot of people, if you don't want a six to 10, you're able to take electives during the day. Um, but the first year is pretty much locked in for you. Um, and you're only able to take one elective of your choice and that's in the spring. Um, and then moving into your second year, you have a little more flexibility, but it's nice for the first year, you just have everything with your cohort and you're able to plan things accordingly with people that have the same exact schedule as you. I hope yeah, that answers yeah. the question well enough. Um, but yeah. Yeah, thanks Marley. And and the other thing with that is that classes are Monday through Thursday for the early career program. So there are no classes on Friday. There's still group work and there's still gonna be things you may have to do, but no scheduled classes on Fridays for early career. And then for the MBAP, it's it's twice a week. So depending on you know your spring or start or spring start date or your fall start date in Salem, you're always Monday, Tuesday evenings. But in Portland, it switches every year whether or not you're going to be Monday, Tuesday or Wednesday, Thursday. And then also on the electives that you choose, it could switch your nights as well. So, and then another question was, you said every student gets some sort of funding. Uh, what's the percentage wise? So this is where we take more of a holistic approach. We do not put people into this kind of matrix category where most schools do. And they're going to tell you, we're going to give you 30% or we're going to give you 20%. We kind of start off with a percentage similar to that, okay, before and and. And if you're an early career career change student, we often will give you a conditional admits. Almost 100% of the time, it's conditional because most students haven't taken the GRE or GMAT yet. If you have taken the GRE or GMAT and we have your score, then the amount of scholarship is going to depend upon that score. So we go all the way up to full tuition scholarship. In order to get full tuition, you got to score above that 88th percentile on either the GRE or the GMAT. Otherwise, we're looking at your interview your grades, your course curriculum, all that good stuff. And, and it varies. Um, you know, most scholarships are, are, are people at most schools are going to say, like I said, you're at 30% and that's what you're going to get. I can't promise you you're at 30% because you may be at 50%. You know, you, you're you not going to get anything less uh, than 25% most of the time is what I guess I could say. You're going to be well above that. You know, uh, that's what we see. So if you're looking at a percentage, I would probably look at a base at right around 35, and then it goes all the way up from there. Um, is MBA Master's in Data Science available for international applicants too? Absolutely. So the combo program for early career and Master's in Data Science is available for international students. You can apply uh, right out the gate as a joint applicant. Either way, you start off in the MBA program. You don't start taking elective courses 
until really you, there's one kind of base course you can take uh, in your second semester, but it's really in your second year in the MBA. So with that being said, there's two, two trains of thought. You can apply directly to the joint program right away, or you can apply to the MBA. And then what some of our international students have done is they apply to the master's in data science within that first year that they're in the program to find out, do I really wanna do it? I wanna meet these uh, professors in the data science first. I wanna ask more questions. So you can do it either way. You can apply as an early career MBA only and then apply to data science, or you can apply as joint right away. Uh, how can international students qualify for external scholarships? So, so external scholarships. So Willamette offers um, for early career kind of a base model of scholarships and uh, international students are going to qualify for all of the money that's available there in those scholarships. So there's no external Willamette scholarship that early career students, whether it's domestic or international, that have to apply for. The only external scholarship we have is in the MBA for Professionals program. It's a George and Colleen Hoyt not-for-profit scholarship designed for people that are working for not-for-profits. And it's because George and Colleen Hoyt gave a generous donation and we have this pile of money sitting there. Outside of that, for both programs, when you apply, you're automatically qualified for whatever the scholarship money that we have. So there's no other external scholarships. Um, so... Uh, what happens to your scholarship options when you're granted a GMAT waiver? So the GMAT or GRE waivers are only for people in the MBA for professionals program. So early career and career change students um, do not have an option of waiving out of the exam. So international applicants, you have to take the exam. Domestic early career career change applicants have to take the exam. So if you have uh, the only people that can qualify for waivers are people in the MBAP because now we're utilizing experience. Whereas in early career, we're anticipating most students are coming with no experience and that's what the program is designed. Whereas MBAP, that's not the case. We're requiring experience for you to get in that program, which is what most MBA program executive level type programs do. And that's what our professionals program does. So because of that, they're able to opt out of the exam. But international students, domestic Early Christians all have to take the exam. Uh, what happens to your scholarship options when you're granted a GMAT waiver? I think I answered that. Did I miss any questions from anyone? No. Um, and so is everybody able to unmute themselves? That was going to be my last thing before I, I kind of let everyone go. If you do have a question that you'd like to ask us, uh, please, you can stay on here and ask before we let everyone go. Otherwise, we hope we've answered, you know, as much as we could this evening. We definitely want to stay in contact with everyone. We appreciate everyone coming to this uh, this webinar. And the one thing I'll say is I'm going to go ahead and type. Does, does everyone know how to access our contact information? It's going to be the other thing I was going to say. I'm going to type my email, my name and email, and I would encourage my other recruiters to do this too, into the chat. So if anybody wants to copy and paste this stuff, uh, I'm going to include my cell phone number, and just so international students understand, my cell phone number is also my WhatsApp number. So there's my cell and my email. And somebody's typing a lot faster than me. There we go. So there's mine, and hopefully Nate, Marley, and Alex, you guys entered yours. Um, but does anybody... is is there any other questions before we kind of turn you guys loose? No? Okay. Well, thank you again for your time. We really appreciate everybody taking their time. We will email this out or uh, send out the link of this recording to everyone who was unable to make it. And for those that were here, again, we really appreciate it. We hope to stay in contact with you. Please reach out and uh, we look forward to working with you and, and talking with you soon.